Wow. Not a good sign. But beautiful run nonetheless. Whoa. Well, I turned off my turn signal. <laughs> What's up, riders? Old man Ronan here, and welcome back to the channel. Yeah, we're on our uh, KLR today, and uh, like I said, we're going to do a little bit of gravel road driving. Now, I'm not going to air down the tires, uh, basically because I want to get a feel for how she feels, uh, basically right out of the box, if you will. Uh, this is a 2022, uh, and you guys uh, saw in the last video, but we'll put the specs up there again right now. Well, it's a really chilly morning this morning. I think I started at, uh, I think the temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll put the Celsius up on the top. It's uh, The colors are starting to turn really, really nice, and it's going to be a beautiful fall, as long as it won't get any really strong wind to knock the leaves off too early. But man, I'll tell you, we're, we've got a lot of things planned here this fall, and you can see some of the colorations coming up, and in between the sun, it's kind of an overcast day, which, uh, well, I, the, the, probably the video will look a little flat because of that, but... Uh, we're still having a good time, <laughs> no doubt about it. But what I wanted to talk to you today about was how this thing handles on the gravel and possibly some dirt. I'm not sure if I'm going to get her back in the uh, in the undisclosed location or not, but if we do, um, we'll have some fun with it. But for sure, we're going to do some gravel. Because, uh, like I said, in that last video that I made, the one that uh, was the KLR 650, the one that got away, I, uh, I went through some of the the uh, comparisons if you will and I know it's really not a fair comparison between a 650 cc engine and also a 411 cc engine given the fact that there's such great differences in the uh, in the horsepower uh, and even in the torque there's, there's some but it's really to be honest with you these bikes between my Himalayan and this one they feel really really similar uh, the thing that uh, is the biggest uh, uh, plus for this bike is is the fact that it's uh, got the seat, man, and I really love the seat on this uh, the new KLR. Now the older ones didn't have it like this, but they uh, they kind of listen to their folks, and they put one of these more flatter seats on, and you guys will see in the uh, walk around right here. The flatter seat does make a difference. It gives me the ability to adjust my weight. Uh, this thing is a very top-heavy bike. I will tell you that. It's one of the only negatives that I can come up with right off the top of my head. I mean, it's because this big gas tank up here, it's got over six gallons of fuel in it. Uh, and and it, it is a tall bike. Um, it's got a 34-inch, you guys saw it in the specs there, 34-inch uh, uh, seat height, they say. But I, I'm able to flat foot it. I guess it's because of my boots that I'm able to flat foot this thing because I have a 34-inch inseam. And you would think, <laughs> but I got about a half an inch to an inch to spare. And uh, it, it really, really is a very comfortable riding motorcycle. And like I said, you can see me. I can be able to scoot up and scoot back. Uh, the engine torque. Fantastic low-end torque, uh, not as good as the Himalayan, but it is, uh, and I mean that with all due respect because, again, it's a different size engine, but the that low-end torque on the Himalayan is, is, I mean, it is a mule, man, I'm telling you. This is more of a more of a horse than a mule. She'll still get the job done. I'm not going to make any bad uh, remarks on it. It still gets the job done, but, man, that Himalayan is such a mule when it comes to that low-end torque, and that's one of the things I love most about that bike. These bikes are built for this, plus gravel and dirt. 
and you know like the BDRs and the Transamerica Trail and dirt trails and, and moto camping and that's what the Himalayan and the KLRs are built for and I, I'd like to put them in the same realm because I think they're very very similar and you guys noticed in that last video I said a lot of that it, they really are similar in a lot of ways I do really enjoy this bike I really do I uh Man, if I was rich, <laughs> I know I keep saying that. You do have to run these singles through the rev range. Um, maybe not this as much as the uh, Himalayan if you want to get the speed quicker, but as far as getting the power that you really do. I love the fact that this thing has really good, uh, in the lower gears, really good engine braking. You can throttle up and then throttle down. You can feel her jump down. And uh, I think that's a big, uh, big factor. And she does handle extremely well. I'm kind of testing a new uh, microphone in the helmet. I had an off-brand that I normally don't use in this helmet before because I couldn't get the... Uh, the purple panda which is what I usually use in my helmets uh, but I finally got one in and uh, we're putting it in to see how she sounds because I, I didn't really like the sound out of the other the other mic uh, my other helmet sounded better so this is more of a fair test we'll see put down in the comments if you think my uh, my audio is good or, or bad if you will not really a fan of these cheapo plastic uh, hand guards. I don't really know what they're for other than the fact just to uh, block the wind from you. Uh, I think the Royal Enfield OEMs are better and of course uh, I'm not a big fan of the Bark Busters because uh, I'm afraid that they'll bend the handlebars if you really hit them hard. But I'm not sure. I've never really done that. So you guys if you have any experience with the Bark Busters and, and dropping your bike at a higher rate of speed or falling or you know or hitting a branch or whatever let me know down in the comments. I really like the comments guys because that's the way I learn too. I'm not an expert in anything except for knowing that I'm not an expert and I'm really a good expert in that. You're an idiot! Easy to ride man. This bike is very easy to ride. I love this seat. I like it a lot. And we're going to head to our one of our favorite gravel roads. Yeah, the low-end torque on this isn't as good as what the Himalayan is. Now you can be in an intermediate gear and come down and from, a, from very little RPM and throttle up without any issue. This needs a little bit more RPM behind her. And here we're getting ready to go. Up around the corner here, they got a little chip and seal at the beginning, and then she goes into gravel. And here she goes. Oh, there's a kitty cat. And you get a little bit of shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake. It does a shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake. And I attribute, yeah, more than what I expected, to be honest with you. And it could probably be the tires. I'm running 37 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. Uh, Suspension is really good, and we're sitting there at 38, which I like too when I'm on a new bike like this that I don't have a lot of experience on. I like to keep her there between 35 and 45. I am getting a little skating on it, more so than I expected, and it's got to be the tires, or maybe it's the top end weight. This thing is a little bit top heavy, and uh, she does have a full tank of gas, but yeah, I do get a little bit more skate than what I do on my Himalayan. A lot more skate, to be honest with you interesting not what I expected so I'm getting a lot of shimmy shimmy shake shake it's not unstable I mean I'm still able to handle with one hand but uh, that is something that I didn't expect slowing down good engine braking though that is nice she's not going to cut out from under you Yeah, I would say uh, in that first initial little shot there, man, the Scram and also the uh, Himalayan does better in the gravel at the same speeds. Interesting.
Now this here is just uh, basically blacktop. There's no chip and seal here, but we will get to do another gravel road here. My favorite, well, like I said, these are my two favorite gravel roads because they, uh, they they've got a combination of hills and everything else, and uh, and I uh, I like the way that I can get an idea on how they feel. Like this here has got more of a uh, the, uh, the the small little fine gravel on top, and then it mixes into the pavement. You know, it basically chip and seal, but it's got a little bit more loose gravel on it. Handles this okay. Man, I wish I had I wish I had this bike longer. I'd love to see what she does in the mud. Yeah, I would definitely say that the uh, the weight at the top has made a difference in the handling for me personally in my experience with uh, these bikes. I would much rather have a lower center of gravity personally. And here we are on my one of my favorite and, and of course there's not really any low-end torque in this thing right now oh, oh missed a gear there wow not a good sign but beautiful run nonetheless whoa that's not as, uh, we get up here where there's more gravel on the road this here is uh, gets washed off pretty quick because of the rain because we're more on hard pack mud but this is one of my f this is my absolute favorite uh, gravel road but I do I do feel it I do feel the shimmy shimmy in this interesting Yeah, she skates a little bit. It's got to be the tires. Got to be the tires. Up across the hill here. Uh, always got to watch that blind hill. It comes up and there's a turn in the middle of it. You know, there's, a, there's houses back here, so there could be a car at any time. Care more on the gravel. I am getting, uh, like I said, I, d I do get more shake. Now, normally on this road, I would air down the tires, uh, but you know, I've done so many rides on the Himalayan on this road that uh, where I've both aired up and aired down. And to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't needed to air down, uh, not on this kind of stuff, uh, and never got this much shake. Interesting. Well, you never know till you know. But I am able to keep the speed up where I want to be, 20, 35 to 40 miles an hour. I think we're running, what, 38 right now? I mean, it's not bad. I'm not going to, I'm not saying this is a negative. I'm just telling you that what I'm feeling, because, you know, that's all I got is what I'm feeling. And what I'm feeling is, is I've, I, I don't have that solid control that I feel on the Himalayan where I'm riding and this kind of stuff. I feel like because it's so light in the uh, in the bottom end that I'm not getting the uh, the good footprint on the tires that I normally do with the Himalayan and that could be a couple different reasons yeah I mean it's just my ass my butt end is skating all over the place again you gotta let the bike go where it wants to go I'm just not paying attention to it as far as uh, it being uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. Uh, I think it would get fatiguing after a while though, having to constantly readjust myself in the seat. I mean, it's a natural feeling to readjust yourself as you're being wiggled around. And maybe airing down would help. Give myself more footprint. Using that air moto system, which I didn't bring along with me today. What? <laughs> well, because I had no intention on airing down. I did check the tire pressure before, and I always do that. Part of my T-clocks, baby. And if you guys don't know what that means, I'll put a link to a video about T-clocks right there. Well. 
very, very interesting and very eye-opening. The more I ride the Himalayan with the, the brakes the way they are, they're a lot more forgiving in a gravel situation like that. For example, when I came to a stop there, you know, I used both brakes. Uh, mostly uh, when in gravel like that, I like to use a little bit more rear uh, than front, obviously. Uh, but I did notice that my front did right at the very last second when I came to a stop before I put my foot down that that uh, front brake kind of grabbed and just held there for a second. In other words, it, uh, it I don't want to say locked up because that would mean that it moved. I mean, it was only like a couple inches, but it did do that, which I've never had that happen on the Himalayan. Oops. <laughs> I know, I forgot to turn off my turn signal. Man, the critters are out today. I don't know if you guys are paying attention. They're all over the place. So what have we learned today? Well, I think that we learned for sure that the bike is a lot more top heavy than the Himalayan. Uh, obviously it's taller, uh, 34 inch, above a 34 inch uh, seat height. Uh, but the gas tank being six gallons, I think adds a lot to the weight at the top end as opposed to the lower part where Himalayan's weight is all at the bottom. Himalayan is not a light bike, but I think it's more evenly balanced. And uh, actually the weight is lower and that makes better handling in the gravel in my humble opinion. Now you guys may have a different opinion. If you do, make sure you have a comment below on that and tell me what your experiences are. Particularly if you've ridden a KLR or own a KLR and you've taken the Himalayan out for a ride and what your, what your thought differences are on the two. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna do a really head-to-head -head comparison, but what I am telling you is if I would buy this bike uh, I, I do like it a lot. I, I just wish that I had more experience on it because right now I feel that my lack of experience isn't giving it a uh, isn't giving it a fair test. Uh, but for my gut, honest opinion, as far as being in in, uh, uh, in a gravel road situation, man, I'll tell you what the Himalayan is amazing. This is adequate, and like I said, I, I wish I had more time on it. That way I would know if it's just my my, uh, you know, inexperience as opposed to having the bike, you know, show its full potential. And I think that's really the only way you can actually get that, which is why I don't really do reviews because I don't want to make sure that I don't want to say anything negative. This bike is not negative. This bike is fantastic. However, what I'm used to is the Himalayan and on gravel, the Himalayan is king, man. I'm telling you, I've never had a bike that's, I've been more comfortable on gravel, even at intermediate speeds. Uh, you know, I'm not really a high speed kind of guy. I'm not running those those lanes in 60 mile an hour. I'm not doing that. That's not me. I, I'm old and I don't, might take too long to heal. Go! <laughs> Well, I hope that makes sense to you guys, and like I said, I really do appreciate you guys watching. Please be a subscriber. That really does mean a whole lot to the Old Man Ronan channel here. Huh, such a pretty day, though. Well, if you did like the video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you do subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. Share and comment. You know I read all the comments, and comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time, guys, ride safe, and keep her on two wheels, baby.